predicting the 2026 F1 driver lineups. Now, let's get into Williams. My lineup is Alex Albon and Frederick Vesti. Of course, Frederick Vesti, uh, he's currently racing in Formula 2. He's kind of been slightly in the wings for a little while, especially with Mercedes. And of course, with Williams having a Mercedes engine, there are some small ties there. So I think alongside Alex Albon, who as much as I think he is a great driver and he has got great potential to deliver in a underperforming car, I just don't know whether that stint at Red Bull will actually stop him from ever getting that big moment again. Uh, not to say that Williams can't take step, steps forward themselves. Maybe being a number one driver at Williams is actually what he wants to be. Uh, so no disrespect to Alvin, but I feel like he might still be there in three years. I have gone for Logan Sargent and Frederick Vesti. Do I think that Vesti is going to be the next George Russell? No. I don't know, think he's going to like absolutely fly through the, uh, the rankings and make his way to the big team at Mercedes quickly like like a George but I'll be perfectly honest I was going through the grid and uh, I needed to promote someone from F2 and he seemed like the kind of person that would uh, would jump up we now move on to Alpha Tauri where I have gone for Ayumu Iwasa and Gabriel Bortoletto now I will be completely honest and say that I had no idea who Gabriel was until I went on to Google and checked what Formula 3 were doing. I can I can be completely honest and say I haven't been checking what Formula 3 have been up to. Uh, but he's doing very well and has had uh, a couple of feature race wins already. And I think very quickly, if you start to have those kind of performances, you get onto a Formula 1 team's radar. And Iwasa, he's got ties with Red Bull. Whether 2026 he might even be in the, the top team, we'll have to wait and see. But he's he's starting to perform in Formula 2. It's not his debut year, but he's still very much not a veteran of Formula 2. He's not in his 10th season or something. He's still learning, but it's uh, yeah, it's one that I can also see if he keeps up this uh, this decent streak because he, he won the last Formula 2 feature race. So my Alpha Tari lineup is an all-Japanese lineup of Iwasa and Sonoda. And I'll just add an extra little prediction into this and say that I reckon Alpha Tauri at this point might not be Alpha Tauri and potentially even maybe some kind of like Honda, not a works team, but uh, a kind of Japanese team to to help with uh, with Honda. And because um, they've obviously, they're going to uh, supply engines in this new era, but currently they don't have anyone to supply uh, because uh, Red Bull had gone off to Ford. So uh, I'm going for an all-Japanese team with Iwasa and Sonoda. We now go to Audi, of course. The uh, new team for 2026, kind of. And uh, I've gone for Lando Norris and Teo Porcher. Again, Porcher's kind of one of those top top Formula 2 drivers that I could see getting into Formula 1 at some point. He might well dip into another team to begin with, but I feel as though maybe Audi might be uh, an opportunity for for a young driver to uh, to hone their skills. Lando Norris will have a few more years under his belt and you can't really see him as a young talent at that stage. Um, so yeah, I think those two could be could be quite an interesting pairing if it if they get him together. But uh, poor chair, I can see him being in Formula 1 at some point and I think... 2026 he'll, he'll, he'll definitely be in in somewhere so for audi i've gone completely different which people will be happy to hear and gone for carlos Sainz and mick schumacher now wow yes it's quite a left field prediction um particularly mick schumacher who i've not been particularly kind to about uh his driving abilities and i do think there's something to be said about uh, how Magnussen is performing now at Haas, uh, maybe question that he wasn't ready, but um, maybe it was just a fact that he wasn't ready. Uh, and I do think Audi will want maybe a, a German headline name in there. And then Carlos Sainz, I just feel like uh, that that could happen at Audi. We've we've gone for the different Seidel reunion. Uh, you've gone mm. for Lando, I've gone for um, Carlos. Right, Tommy, before we dive into our next team, we got to tell everyone about our sponsor for this video, don't we? We sure do. And it's AG1. They are a multivitamin, multimineral, pre- and probiotic immunity support and gives you all the greens you possibly need in one. 
Do you want to see how simple it is, Tommy? I bet you do. I bet you do right now. I'm just gonna, just gonna tear it like that. Boom. You have your eight to 12 ounces of water. Boom, straight in like that. Oh yeah, here we go. It's green as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Aston Martin hype. It promotes gut health, supports immunity, boosts energy, helps recovery. Does that sound good? Is that like quite ASMR-y right now? It does. With the shaking? Yes, it, it's pretty I good. Want, I, want a, I want a little bottle flip. Little a bottle flip, cocktail, but you can't yeah, actually see, of... you can't. Wow. That was actually decent. Were you a that was actually not too bad. In a previous life? I might have been. I might always be worried about Charles Leclerc and Ferrari. But what I'm not worried about is making sure I have 75 vitamins, minerals, and nutrients from Athletic Greens. That was good. But you can have confidence in what you're taking. Athletic Greens is backed by science and is obsessively researched. So if you're interested, click our link to get a one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D3, K2, and five travel packs free with your first purchase. Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. We now go to Haas. I have gone for Kevin Magnussen and Arthur Leclerc. Arthur Leclerc, of course, there's that Ferrari link with uh, the engine. So I thought, look, maybe he'll come into Formula One uh, and, and join Haas and then K-Mag. Hmm. No, I've just realized on the spot that I've retired. And, yeah, no, to be fair, Nico Hulkenberg, I it'd think he would have hung up old. his boots by then. Yeah, be... yeah, I've just realized that on the spot, but I'm now convinced that that's still going to happen and Nico will have a few years and then, and then bin it off. So for Haas, I've gone very left field and gone for Sergio Perez and Andrea Kimi Antolotti. Antonetti. Antonelli. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea Kimi Antonelli. So he's currently doing the um, junior formulas in like the, the regional series and he's got a lot of hype around him. He's a Mercedes young driver so he'll be about 20 at this point and Sergio Perez I just see them having a kind of experienced driver and I feel like Sergio might want to have a stay in Formula One a little bit longer um, but won't won't be the best of cars but you never know maybe Haas are absolute gods by 2026 or don't even exist we will find out we now go to Alpine I am going to lock in Esteban Ocon and Zhou Guan Yu of course, Joe has some previous uh, with the Renault Academy and so on. And I feel as though he'll move on from Alfa Romeo slash Audi, go to a place like Alpine. And I can I can absolutely see it. Yeah, it wasn't the, probably the most um, opportunity giving environment previously for, for, for Joe Guanyu at Alpine. But look, a few years in, under, his, under his belt, smashes Bottas, gets a bit of a, a track record. So we'll go to Alpine and have a great time. I have gone for Zhou Guan Yu and Teo Porcher. Neither Ocon and Gasly stay at Alpine. Don't feel like it's a team many people stay at for long. Uh, Zhou mm. Guan Yu, yeah, same as you. think he'll uh, come back to, to that team. And uh, Teo Porcher is the kind of French driver that I think they will have to tick off uh, that for, for the manufacturer to be happy. We'll now go to McLaren. Okay, I have gone for Oscar Piastri and Colton Herter. Lando's out, and um, I can see uh, someone like Zach Brown, desperate for someone like Colton Herter, in the team for some good old publicity. I, I see it going the way Lando leaves like Science did, and then Os Oscar Piastri picks up the mantle and, um, yeah, carries on. My McLaren lineup. Is Sergio Perez and Oscar Piastri? I feel as though Perez will have a few more years, and then well, I say a few more, maybe one or two more years. Then Red Bull look to um, replace him with with someone uh, perhaps younger, a younger talent. Uh, so I feel as though Perez will not be done. I think he's still got a few years left in him at twenty uh, in twenty twenty six, and McLaren might want that that experience. Of course, Sergio, if not forgetting, was at McLaren for a very short stint in his career. Uh, so it's not as if he's he's never been there. And I still envisage McLaren not doing very well at this point. So I think they'll just take whoever's happy to, to come along. And I think Perez will be. We now go to Ferrari. Where are Ferrari in your eyes, Tommy? I actually found this one quite difficult to, to pick, but I have gone for Pierre Gasly and Alex Albon. Alex Albon in a Ferrari? Yeah. I just that think that's not in my brain compute at all. He's a big, big Ferrari fan. Can see. I mean, he's skipped around 
different teams um, change driver programs and things. And I just see that in three years' time, Alex will be one of those experienced drivers. So it was difficult to find sort of veteran drivers that I thought could fill these slots. So my Ferrari lineup is Carlos Sainz and Pierre Gasly. I think the big thing is, of course, Charles Leclerc's gone. He's had enough. He can't be bothered with blowing up anymore and he wants to go find uh, happiness elsewhere that's how i envisage it i think ferrari won't be a terrible team by any stretch but charles leclerc will give it enough time he'll see it to the end of his contract which is the end of 2025 i believe um and then it will be time for change but yes ferrari signs and gasly it'll be a strong pairing um but but yeah charles leclerc gone now mercedes is up next i have gone for george russell and Esteban Ocon. It's another little kind of sort of reunion in the fact that Ocon was a Mercedes young driver. Uh, Toto Wolff allowed him to sort of cut ties so he could go elsewhere and get a, a race seat. A lot of people was very much the Russell of his day. A lot of people thinking that he should have kicked Bottas out and been the Mercedes teammate to Hamilton when he was looking very good in 2017 in that. Uh, Force India. So, yeah, I'm going for SD Bestie, jumps ship to Mercedes, and I think that's a, a solid lineup of Russell and Ocon. For Mercedes, I have Russell and Leclerc. I feel as though Charlie Boy just sees the track record of Mercedes and goes, I can trust these people. Uh, and I think that would be one of the tastiest lineups in quite some time to see those two go at it. And I could fully well see them becoming potentially enemies as well. Uh, not because yeah. they necessarily dislike each other, but because they're, they're both incredibly good. Russell, especially, his his will-to-will -will combat is, is actually unbelievable. I genuinely think he's one of the best will-to-will -will racers in Formula 1. When you look at those moments in time where he has gone will-to-will, -will, yes, there has been moments as well where he's crashed. And for whatever reason, he had like two or three bad races and everyone's like, oh, he's so crash-happy. He's such a terrible will-to-will -will racer. But if you remember like Hungary, for example, when he was fighting Verstappen there, and it was like unbelievable racing. So I feel as though those two could have quite hard racing sometimes it would spill over and potentially get a, a little bit salty as well god that would be spicy we now go to aston martin our penultimate team is fernando alonso still in your team tommy he is not oh uh, charles leclerc is wow leclerc and stroll together i feel like when alonso does go however much i want him to stay forever um i think oh it's borderline this is borderline um, but I think they'll want a high-profile name and they will get Charles away from the nightmare of Ferrari. So for my Aston Martin lineup, I've gone for Lance Stroll and Fernando Alonso. I mean, he would be, what, 44 at that point? But there's, I have had absolutely zero uh, reason to believe that right now, as a 41-year-old, he doesn't have what it takes. So in three years' time, yes, he's going to get older and potentially a few percent off of what he what he is now. But Alonso and the team, look what he's doing for the team as well right now. People are lauding Aston Martin as this incredible team that's moved forward, and that's thanks to Alonso. It's not so much thanks to Stroll. He's not been producing the podiums. So, yeah, I think that if Alonso wants to carry on, that's the key thing then I think he will. See 2026, see if the new regs are unbelievable for Aston. And if they are, he'll be going till he's 60. And if they're not, he'll bin it off after the after the 26th season. God, I'm feeling so sick right now. Now, the final team before Tommy chunders everywhere is Red Bull. I'm going for Max Verstappen and Lando Norris. Uh, wow. I know, yeah. I feel like Lando goes over there, joins his mate, and we've got a half Belgian super team. <laughs> Verstappen and Sonoda. I've gone for Verstappen and Sonoda because I think Sonoda will continue to move forward as he has done. I think he's doing very well against De Vries, for example, this year. And I have no reason to believe that he won't continue taking that step up. Red Bull will want to have a new younger talent, which obviously Tommy has gone for with Lando. Uh, but I think Sonoda deserves a shot. 2026, it's his year. Yuki world champ. 
Right, that is it. Thank you so much for watching this 2026 F1 grid predictions. I'd love to know if you think our our thoughts are terrible, washed, actually good in some places. And uh, we'll see you very soon for another podcast. Bye!